Good morning and welcome to Friday Morning Prayer, where we come together this morning with heavy hearts because of what's happening in the Caribbean and now in Mexico where they've had an earthquake measuring eight on the Richter scale and also for the many who've been flooded in the Caribbean. For those still struggling from Hurricane Harvey and for our very own dear sister Bonnie in Louisiana who does amazing work in rescuing God's little creatures, especially cats and kittens, where many have been left without food and shelter because of the hurricane. So we pray for dear Sister Bonnie's ministry and Sister Bonnie's hoping to join the community. She's an ordained minister, but very pro St. Francis. But we also remember too the Rohingya Muslims who are being persecuted, where thousands have had to leave um, the country in Burma. And we hold all God's children. And there are many at this moment who are really, really suffering and struggling. So I light my light this morning for my brothers and sisters, God's children around the world whose lives are shattered by nature's revolt to man's inhumanity to mankind and to the sacred earth. Father, Mother, God, hear our prayer for we come to you this morning pleading with your love and your mercy and for compassion and for the divine help that your children now need, especially in Mexico and in the Caribbean. And we thank our government here in the UK for releasing 35 million pounds to support the rescue effort in the Caribbean and for sending troops engineers and a team of experts to support them rebuild their infrastructure. Lord, thank you for the generosity from this small island to your children. Amen. And this morning we remember Sister Sue's son James, who's taking his accountancy exams today. And we remember our dear little hen, Ginger, who's still with us and still with her little head tucked under her wing. She's pain free, she's comfortable, but she's refusing any fluids. So we just pray. And I pray for each one of you here. And I welcome our dear sister Sue and our dear brother Meldwin and on our Facebook page, I remember our dear sister Sandra, who set her alarm clock at 3 a.m. to join us. Bless your heart, dear Sandra. And for Debbie Reedy, who's joined us, for Paul Wyszynski, welcome, dear Paul. <clears throat> and oh, thank you, Sandra, for your kind words for Ginger. So let us ring are Tibetan bells for peace, for God's peace. And as we take a deep breath in, we call on the spirit of a loving God, a God who has many names and none. And we call on our amazing God to enfold each and every one of us here and beyond with all the brothers and sisters past and present from our community and for all those working in the rescue effort in the Caribbean, in Texas and Louisiana and also now in Mexico. Our morning prologue for this Friday morning 
we say together we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly father mother god the earthly mother and all the great masters and reverence to the holy pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect friday morning we commune with the angel of air saying angel of air enter my lungs and give the air of life to my whole body and as we say this we contemplate on the atmosphere around us as we connect with the rhythm of our breathing amen amen and our hymn this morning yes you've guessed right sorry our opening prayer you've guessed right is from the little book of celtic prayers from iona I awake this morning in the presence of the holy angels of God. May heaven open wide before us, above us and around us, that we may see the Christ of our love and that his sunlit company in all the things of earth today. That's a lovely prayer. And now our hymn from Sing Your Faith from the Unitarian Hymn Book. And this morning we have hymn number 87, Leave Behind Your Bags and Baggage. Mm. Leave behind your bags and baggage, throw all caution to the air. Let the wind blow through the cobwebs, cast aside all anxious care. Let the God of all our mercies breathe around you everywhere. Journey onwards, never doubting, God will speak a kindly word. Looking forward, always trusting, what your heart feels will be heard. Love your sister and your brother, kindness will not be deterred. In the face of war, and hatred, peace and justice we extol, share the warmth of fellow feeling, use, urging us onto our goal. With your confidence enthuse us, God, the life in every soul. And that's by Peter Sampson, born in 1938. Ten years before me, lesson and now from psalms now from the reverend leslie brandt we were given this morning quite early our psalm for this morning and our psalm is psalm 72 O god of love grant to your sons and daughters and servants the grace to represent you effectively in our discordant world Give us the courage to put our lives on the line in communicating life and truth to all your creatures, wherever they may be found. Where there is injustice, may we diagnose its cause and discover its cure. Where there is bigotry, teach us how to love and how to encourage others to love. Where there is poverty, help us to share our wealth that has come from your hand. Where there is war and violence, may we be peacemakers that lead all men and women to your eternal peace. Help us, O oh God, to become what you have destined and empowered us to become. Where there is darkness, May we become the rays of your sun that banish the gloom of lonely lives. And where there is drought, let us be like fresh showers that turn barren deserts into green meadows. And where there is ugliness and distortion, enable us to portray the beauty and the order of your will and purposes. 
great God, you are in our world. Your majesty is reflected in your creation about us. But there are multitudes who do not feel your concern or acknowledge your love. Is it because your servants have failed to carry out your command and commission that we have yet to sense the significance of our salvation and the purpose of our mission? Forbid, O God, that we be deaf to the cries of the poor and indifferent to those who have needs. May we identify with those who are oppressed and help to bear the burdens of those who suffer about us. May we hear your, your voice of concern and feel your loving touch through your servants who are in this world to manifest you to all men and women about them. The glory is yours, O God, and we shall praise your name and celebrate your cause together. And we shall celebrate your cause together. And my heart is heartened when I see you here, when I see the children of God who have heard the call of God to come, to pray together, to support each other, and to nurture that divine spark within us. It's so easy to throw the towel in. Trust me, I've been tempted so many times to throw the towel in, to take off the habit and go to an all-night disco. Oh yes, I'm human. But you know, that's giving in. My heart, like your heart, was destined to be part of God's heart, to be God's hands and feet and beating heart in a beautiful world, the Cathedral of God, where so many of God's children today are so disillusioned by the media, by fear, by rejection, and where so many are out for what they can get from you who use you and then discard you as if you're a piece of rubbish. I'm recyclable. God can use me in whatever way God wants. All I pray is that I never turn my back on the one who loves me and the one who gave me a second chance. Because when I was very ill 20 odd years ago and lost everything, the shirt on my back, because of mental illness. It was a long struggle through four years of, of being absolutely petrified. But you know, in that time, God was working an amazing plan to reform me from being a negative Christian who was bogged down with so much guilt and fear and judgment so that the person I am today is because of God's gentle loving care and the support of my community. So if you're going through the mill today or if fear has taken a hold of your life or if you feel unworthy, not good enough, then you really need to hit base with the beloved. You need to come into the presence of God and ask God to show you what God sees in you. Don't think about it. That's a ploy of the evil one to take you off your track. Go into your heart and listen to that inner voice that calls you by name to eradicate fear from your life, to eradicate self-judgment, low self-worth, and to just reclaim 
who you are as a beloved of God. God has many plans for you and me, but so many who miss the boat and who end up living miserable lives, it's often through neglect. They've neglected their heart because they're afraid of what others will think of them. The secret is to stop being a person pleaser and to become a God pleaser. To let God shine his light through you. But first, you have to embrace that light. And that involves a bit of sacrifice. It involves, it involves you surrendering your heart to love. And to walking that simple path of love. And reaffirming each morning when you come to offer yourself to God, the simplest the words, the better. Use your own words. For example, this morning at 5 a.m., I was very tempted to go back to bed and say, oh, I'll do it later. But my heart was saying no. So your prayer offering is, Lord, I come before you. Show me how I may be of service to you today. It may be that we're struggling with illness. It may be that we're bedfast. God will show you a way and he'll give you the strength to bless every situation you're in. It may be deep unhappiness. It may be the rejection of a lover or a partner. It may be debt. It may be whatever. But God will always give you the strength to rise up out of the ashes as he helped me. But you know, I share with you an old saying from my monastery days as a young monk, from an old monk. When we all had disappointments, many disappointments, and he, the Brother Celestus said to me, Brother, Remember, man's disappointment today is God's appointment for your tomorrow. So bless the disappointment and give it to God. Don't wallow, just be still. And talking of stillness, my heart was guided to pick up the little book, Jesus Calling by Sarah Young. I'm holding it in my hand. And I'm asking the Lord Jesus, our beloved, to choose a message for each one of us that will give us hope, encouragement, and eradicate misery and fear from our life. So here we go. We open at random. Come to me, come to me, come to me. This is my continual invitation to you proclaimed in holy whispers. When your heart and mind are quiet, you can hear me inviting you to draw near. Coming close to me requires no great effort on your part. It is more like ceasing to resist the magnetic pull of my love. Open yourself to my loving presence so that I may fill you with my fullness. I want you to experience how wide and how long and how high and deep is my love for you, so that you can know my love that surpasses knowledge. This vast ocean of love cannot be measured or explained, but it can be experienced. Come to me when you are weary and are weak. Rest snugly in my everlasting arms. I do not despise your weakness, my child. Actually, it draws me closer to you because weakness stirs up my compassion, my yearning to help 
Accept yourself in your weariness, knowing that I understand how difficult your journey has been. Do not compare yourself with others who seem to skip along their life paths with ease. Their journeys have been different from yours and I have gifted them with abundant energy. I have gifted you with fragility, providing opportunities for your spirit to blossom in my presence. Accept this gift as a sacred treasure. Delicate, sorry, delicate yet glowing with brilliant light. Rather than struggling to disguise or deny your weakness, allow me to bless you richly through it. Let us stop now and let us allow the Master, the Beloved, whoever your God or teacher is, to speak to your heart and to hear the words again from the beloved God who has called you by name. So let us do that now. Be still. And just imagine the Lord Christ standing in front of you. His hands are out. He's calling you, come. He's crying out for you to surrender to this amazing love and to let him guide you, protect you, and for you to fall in love with your first love. This is what following God is all about. It's not about being crafty or clever or academic. It's about keeping everything simple and it's becoming childlike. Childlike. God will never abuse you. God will never play mind games with you. God will follow you every step of your journey and he will not give up on you. He didn't give up on me. But it took 40 years for him to finally get me where he wanted me to be. And it was through a mental breakdown where God spoke to my heart to take baby steps again, but to walk with him rather than with my ego. I'm inviting you now to name whatever is heavy on your heart and to release it to the Lord God in a mindset of gratitude and love and leave it with God. And just keep saying thank you God for never giving up on me, for hearing my prayer and for showing me your will for me today for showing me how I can be of service to you today. Let us be still. to this table of love where we break bread together regardless of our belief, regardless of the church, synagogue or mosque we might belong to. God does not buy into all of that. What God buys into is an open heart that's free to love again. And God desires your love. God desires you to surrender who you are in your brokenness, in your fragility, and always remember in our disability, 
It is God's availability for us. I bring all the many requests we've had from many beautiful souls crying out for God's help in our intentions book. I bring today little Tyler. I'm waiting now for news on how he's doing. I bring our dear beloved Ginger, our little cat, our little hen, who sat here in the kitchen in a special cage with lots of warmth and love. I bring all God's creatures and I bring Sister Bonnie, a member of our community who's dedicated her life like Frances for caring for God's sick and abandoned animals, especially cats. And in the Louisiana area and now with Florida and the way in the wake of another hurricane and more besides, She's working flat out in Louisiana with her volunteers to rescue the abandoned animals that were caught up in the floods. So we pray for dear sister Bonnie and her amazing team of volunteers who work for nothing to support God's little creatures. And I want to pray today for each one of you because your life matters to God. And I want to thank God for you, for giving up your time to come here and to join me in prayer. They may not be the prayers you're used to because you may have a different belief to me, but the one thing is for sure, we're all in love with the same God, but we have a different name. I pray for Sue here and Meldwin and for their families and friends in need. And here I pray for my dear brother Cash and his wife Paula, Paula who's here with us. And I just say, Lord, thank you for these two amazing souls that you brought into my life. And I pray that you will allow us to work together for our highest good, for our new postulants and oblates who are willing to take a chance and to work with us so that the Lord God of many names can use them as light bearers of peace in this beautiful though fractured world where so many have walked away from God, where they have a great disregard for the sacredness of our earth and for the animal kingdom. I pray this morning for Sister Sandra, who rises at 3 a.m. to join us for prayer there in East Texas, and yet who suffers so much and always puts others first. I ask the Lord God to bless our dear sister with renewed strength as we open our arms to her to become a member of our small family, where we live a simple life of listening to what God is asking of us. For Debbie and for Paul, for John, for dear John, who also is joining us as a postulant in October, welcome dear brother. For, for Denise Robinson, welcome dear brother. Uh, sorry, sister, and Eduardo de Riviera Rosario, Jr. What a lovely name. Bless you. And for dear, ah, Brother Harry is with us. Good morning, dear brother. I hope you're feeling stronger from prayer. For dear Miriam, bless you, Miriam. For Andrew Greenwell, for Paul Kemp, for Eddie Holt, for Jane. Ah, good morning, dear Jane. And yes, good morning and blessings to each and every one of you. But let us just for a moment, just bring ourselves together into a circle of light. And into this circle of light and love, let us bring the people of Mexico who are now enduring the impact of a rather nasty earthquake measuring eight on the Richter scale where there's been awful devastation 
and lives lost. For the people, our brothers and sisters living in the wake of Hurricane Irma and we're in the low-lying islands like I've forgotten the names but they've lost everything and now they've got Hurricane Jose with another one on top of that making their way to them for the people of Florida now expecting the full pelt of Hurricane Irma and for all those living in and around the Texas area still recovering from Hurricane Harvey what is happening to us could it be Mother Earth speaking to us and saying, this is time to stop abusing what God has given to us? And for President Bush, to, uh, President Trump, to take responsibility for his people and sign up to the Paris Agreement for climate change, as we all have, and to try and safeguard the lives of God's children by curtailing all the emissions that we give off. We pray today for the safety and well-being of you and the whole family of God. And we mustn't forget the Rohingya Muslims where there's genocide being performed in parts of Asia and our, press, our Prime Minister has contacted uh, Susan Shi to try and get her to intervene because when she was in isolation from her people, we supported her and now she's free. We pray that she will respect the freedom that all faiths have a right to live together in love, not just Buddhists, or Christians, but all faiths. And that's why I am so thankful to God that he called me to be a part of this lovely little community where we embrace all God's children, all faiths and none, and where we do not sit in judgment because they are not of our belief. So let us now just shower love, light and blessing and also to the people of Yemen and Syria and wherever there is discontent in the world or religious prejudice. Let us hold the children of God in this safety net of our love and prayer and not forgetting dear sister Bonnie and the amazing work she's doing there in Louisiana. Amen. We now pray the Lord's Prayer, the traditional Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to each one of us here at this moment our daily bread. Forgive us. Forgive us the times when we have been impulsive, irrational, self-centered, selfish, preoccupied by our own weaknesses and illnesses, where we have failed in charity, in thought, word or deed, or maybe where we've sat in judgment on another. Lead us not astray, O Lord, but protect us from those negative forces that seek to alienate us from your love. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So be it. Amen. Our closing prayer is different, but we've shared it with you before. God has no hands but our hands to do his work today. He has no feet but our feet 
to lead men in his way. He has no tongue but our tongue to tell men how he died. He has no help but our help to bring them to his side. We are the only Bible the careless world will read. We are the sinner's gospel. We are the scoffer's creed. We are the Lord's last message, given in deed and word. What if the type is crooked, and what if the print is blurred? What if our hands are busy with other work than his? What if our feet are walking to where sin's allurement is? What if our tongues are speaking of things his lips would spurn? How can we hope to help him and hasten his return? Amen. The blessing of heaven, the blessing of earth, the blessing of sea and sky on those we love this day and on every human family, the gift of heaven, the gift of earth, the gift of sea and sky, the gifts of Brother Sun and Sister Moon and the animal kingdom be with you now and always. Amen. And as I come to blow out this flame, we give thanks to the God of many names and none for touching your heart right now and for protecting all those whom we have remembered here this morning. Amen. Go in peace, to honour your heart, to listen to your heart, and to reclaim who you are as a child of God. And allow that Spirit of God reawaken within you that you matter to God. So become his hands and feet and beating heart of love today. Namaste, Shalom, Inshallah, Paxet Bonum, Om Shanti, Solo di Caritas, Salam Alaikum, Peace. Thank you for giving up your time to join me here, and I look forward to your company again. I'm back again here at five o'clock this evening, UK time. If you can't make it, don't worry. I will still remember you, as I do throughout every hour of every day. So take care, be of good cheer, and remember, God loves a cheerful giver. God bless.